Well, Brent Mitiga, Mudra and Awunya, you go and I are Dark and Young Morawa. Hello, friend, good to see you. Today I'm on Dark and Young Country. Well, actually, it's disputed country between Goringa and Dark and Young, but from the evidence I've found, I believe it's uh, Dark and Young, not Goringa. I'm down here today at Bado Bay. You can see behind me the, what's it called? The Bay House Motel. Um, I'm parking up here today and I'm going to do a walk through Warrabalong National Park. Uh, that I know as the coast track. So it starts here at the top of Shelley Beach in Baddow Bay and it ventures through via Crackneck Lookout up all the way to the top of Foresters Beach at Werribalong Lookout. So I have done this walk a few times before, it's a lovely walk. Today I'm going to bring you guys along and give you a look at it. Hope you enjoy it. So what you can see down the bottom there is the Blue Lagoon Resort, I think it's called. Um, yeah, it's basically Caravan Park Resort right down there on Shelley Beach. Now there are a bunch of different trails through here. Uh, lots of little side shoots and stuff like that that you can walk down and explore. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different tracks that come through here. Wonga Point Loop Track goes straight ahead and then the Baddow Bay Picnic Area. And this is part of the coast walk it goes off to the right. I'm going to head out to the point and give you a look out there because it's pretty bloody nice out there. You can get some cracking views. I'm not going to get too close here. It's that massive mound that you can see in front of us. Scrub turkey nest, you can see they're in there working on it. That's wicked. There's a few of them through here. So that down there is Baddow Bay Beach. So I won't necessarily be walking across the beach, but we will be going up all through the headlands and everything over the top of it. So, some people, I believe, do climb up and down there, but not one I'd like to do. But yeah, that's a bad A Bay. It's a beautiful spot. Hardly anybody on the beach. So, for those of you interested, this is a Lamandra longifolia, also known as spiny headed mat rush. Don't know the Durag name. You can tell it by the spiny heads and the seed pods in that there. Um, Aboriginal people would use this for cordage, for weaving, things like that, the leaves. But then if you pull the bottoms of the leaves out, you can actually get a little white section on the bottom of them. And that tastes like raw green peas, it's very edible. Quite nice on a good walk too, it's quite refreshing. So here we are, this is back to the main trail, as you can see the sign over there. You know, Baddow Bay picnic area just out this way. So 
So this is the Baddow Bay picnic area. Nice wide open area, plenty of grassy areas, a few seats, tables, things like that. One thing I am noticing though, no bins. Just walked out to the road and haven't even seen a bin out there. So Central Coast Council, get off your ass, garbage bins. You don't want people dumping rubbish, put some bins in. There's another beautiful area here. Little tables and whatnot to sit here and look out over the beach. I'll give you a look out over the edge in a sec. Let's see if there's any garbage bins here. Because somebody's been leaving rubbish behind. And now for the third section. So, according to the signs, it's Wonga Point Loop Track and then the Coast Track from here. So, I don't know, I just call the whole thing the Coast Track. This section's a little bit different, it's actually paved. It's kind of weird, but it makes it easy for everybody. But, it does say no bikes. I guarantee you'll get your bike through. Here's something that's pretty new. Pedestrian counters. Haven't really seen them before. There's another scrub turkey nest. No turkeys on it this time. The area is closed for rehabilitation. There's a few seconds I'm noticing like that at the moment. At the end of the day, it's not part of the path. You shouldn't be out there anyway. But it will provide some good views. Gadja, grass tree. These are commonly known as a black boy. However, a lot of Aboriginal people will get the shits with that. Like the Lamandra longifolia or the spiny headed mat rush, apparently you can eat the bottom of the leaves on these as well. Uh, the stump of them as well, you can get resin out of to help make spearheads and things like that. And the leaves can be used for cordage and weaving and whatnot as well. So. Uh, the spikes that you get on these, lastly, is also used for um, spear handles and when they're in flower you can collect all the honey or the pollen and that off them and it's quite sweet as well. So yeah, a bit of a supermarket plant these things and they take forever to grow too so when you see one don't hurt them. I think that might be the sassafras vine, I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, not too sure, but looks similar to the sassafras. And here we got one of my favourite flowers of all time, the flannel flower. Not going to go touch them, but when you do, the leaves and the flower themselves it actually feels like flannelette. Uh, very common along the coast here. I uh, don't know if there's any particular uses for them, but absolutely beautiful. As you're walking through here, I don't even know if you can see this on camera. Just keep your eye out because 
National Parks have put on all these little speed humps. You can see the little white dot there and a white dot there. That's all there is really to indicate that there's a bump there. So just watch yourself so you don't trip over the damn things. So this here is the spike of a Xanthoria that's laying down for some reason. But you can see all the little flowers growing on it. I don't know what that was that just grabbed onto me. You can see all that on my fingers. I'm very sweet like honey. Very nice. And yeah, as you can see, normally they stand up straight. Maybe they just got too heavy for such a young one. Not sure, but. And here we have the Gaimea lily. Uh, again, they get a big spike. I'm not sure really as to what these were used for. I'm sure they could have been used for weaving and um, shelter covers and things like that, but I'm yeah, not too sure what these were actually used for. All right. Beautiful old tree. Shame to see a few limbs taken off it, but I'm guessing that's because they've become dangerous. Uh, you wouldn't want that falling down on you for sure. Uh, beautiful old tree though. So since I was last here, Crackneck Lookouts had a makeover. When I was here last there was no car park here, well, in this section anyway. Um, I can see the top of Crackneck up here. But yeah, none of this was here when I was here last. This little wooden walkway was though. So here I am up at Crackneck, uh, Crackneck Lookout. Let's stop here and have something to eat. As I said, this has all been renovated since I was here last. Hey Maggie. Um, the road here and car park was pretty well unmarked and uh, not in real good condition. Definitely a big change to what it used to be. None of these little sandstone layers were here or anything like that. So, see how that view though. That's beautiful. I have to say one thing, they've done a lot to do up the area there, the picnic area and that. It looks a lot nicer, uh, a lot more seats and things like that there. But there's still no garbage bins. I, I've been carrying somebody else's rubbish from the start of this walk because national parks have not provided a single garbage bin along here. 
Like, come on, National Parks. We know you don't want to do nothing, but seriously, get off your ass. So this is the second section of the coast track um, on the southern side of Crackneck Lookout. Uh, as the sign said back there, it's 3.1 k's. I'm pretty sure that's return, not one way. If I remember correctly, it's about 8 k's return uh, for this entire walk. So, But still, it's a beautiful spot. Kind of disappointed that they've gone and put this gravel down though. Same deal as done before, like fair enough, they're trying to divert the water and things like that, but there's next to nothing to show you that there's a lump there. And yeah, it's just, I don't know why they couldn't have just kept it a, a dirt bloody track like it should be. Although it does look like it might go to dirt just up here. Okay, so a short way in it does go back to a dirt track. There's another bush turkey, a scrub turkey. Hiding over there. Yeah, glad it goes back to a dirt track. It's much more enjoyable when it's like that, but I don't know. National parks are just weirdos. That's how you can see over there. That's where I'm walking to. That's where I belong looking out. I've got to say, I'm really loving this walk today with all the flowers out. It's so pretty. The amount of funnel flower out here is gorgeous. I really wish I could pluck some and take them home, I'll tell you. Absolutely beautiful flowers. I just checked that one out there in full, full bloom. That's beautiful. And they are so soft to touch and they are just everywhere through here. Plus these little things, I'm not sure what they are. But they're everywhere as well. Absolute crazy through here. Really, really spectacular time of year to come through and see everything in bloom like this. There's some more of those little things. Well, I'm almost at the end of the trail. Except I've got to go back yet. <laughs> As you can see, I'm walking off the edge. I just find walking off the edge easier than doing steps. And here we are at Warrabah Long Walkout.
And there's that tower I was telling you about. So we've got a couple of hang glider launches here. I'll go over to where the tower is and I'll give you a look off the edge there. So I'm not too close to Mr. Whippersnipper. So it's looking back over Tugra Lakes. Over Bado Bay and toward the entrance and my part of the central coast. My part of the central coast is on the far end of Tugra Lakes, Budgewoo Lakes. But anyway, a big dish here. And then, Mr. Tower. So I'm guessing that's a mobile phone tower or something along them lines. It's pretty big, obviously covered in graffiti. And then you've got what I'm assuming is a control room underneath. And you can walk out over the roof of it and up top, which is where I'm taking you now. So that first beach you can see there would be Forrester's Beach. Um, beautiful little spot. And then that lagoony part that you can see on the right hand side, just past it. Uh, pretty sure that would be coming up into Womberall Lagoon. Uh, it'd be out that way somewhere. I'm not 100% sure what it'd be called, but pretty sure that'd be Womberall Lagoon. When you come down a little bit further, you've got Womberall and Terrigal coming out to this first point just out here somewhere. Uh, that first point that you can see is Terrigal Skillion. Well, not this point, but the next one about here somewhere. That's Terrigal Skillion. And then the next one out is Copacabana, uh, south of Oka. And ironically, you can actually, when you're looking from Heaton's Lookout, you can actually make them out from Heaton's Lookout. So, that's all I love about Heaton's. You can just see so far. And then obviously out over the ocean, it's just absolutely stunning. Well guys, I think that will do me for this walk. What a stunning walk and the amount of flannel flower in that out today, absolutely amazing. Or just flowers in general, absolutely amazing. Really love that walk. I'm a bit buggered, so I'm gonna sit here for a bit and recoup and relax uh, before I start the fun walk back to the car. Um, from memory, it's about an 8K return trip. It's about 4Ks each way from memory. So yeah. If you don't want to do the whole thing, you can always start at Crackneck Lookout or even along the way, especially in that first part, there's a lot of little side shoots in that that you can do out there as well. So there's a lot of little different paths out there that you can take if you don't want to do the whole thing. Alrighty guys, let me know in the comments what you thought of this walk. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Yanma Bujidi Murugu, walk a good path. Yano, goodbye.